Okay. Hey guys, it's Main here. So, um, so today we have a very special uh, account review. Uh, I had someone reach out to me who I've spoken to before. Um, we're both in one of uh, Griffy Bits. Uh, we're, we're both in this channel. We're pretty active in the chat. And he, uh, we're also part of kind of like the Guild Sisters system that Griffy Bits got going on. But um, he is someone that's been playing the game for, I want to say, quite a while. Uh, anyway, he has a really progressed account. Um, something, you know, you wouldn't expect someone to reach out to me for an IE review on, but I thought it would be very interesting to see um, someone's account who is so far progressed, it's incomprehensible how you get to this point. Um, at least, you know, at least for most people, they can't really comprehend how you get to this level just to give you some perspective um arlong is the person we were doing review for today he is account level 50 almost 5700 um pretty much every single one of his characters i imagine he's probably completed the equinox dream of getting everyone a 500 minimum he has uh he has a lot of his talents already max booked out i imagine uh well i mean not including sovereign artifacts which you know you know get good um but there's a lot of there's a lot of, I suppose, oh, he just told me he's updating it. So we're going to see kind of how this uh, how this changes. But he told me uh, he, he wanted to get a review done uh, just to see what I could say about it, get my perspective, uh, to see if there's something I might see that he doesn't, if there's uh, something I can provide some insight on that he doesn't immediately see from his account. Because, you know, he looks at this probably every single second of every single day, uh, trying to progress in different aspects. So let's... I suppose go through some of the more basic things uh, that. Let me just post this real quick. Uh, refresh in a second. Yeah. So let's go through some of the basic things uh, that just about everyone should be looking at in terms of progression uh, to see, you know, what he's done, uh, how far he's gone with it, and what you can do as well to try to keep a pace in some aspect with this account because. There's, there's a lot of easy things you could be doing uh, with your account to help progress, hence why I do these reviews, because I notice there's a lot of things that people could be doing, um, and they should be doing, but they're not doing it efficiently. Arlong's probably one of the people, uh, I'd, I mean, he's, he's not by far the sweatiest person in the game. Uh, if you go to the leaderboards, you can definitely see people that are sweatier than him, but he definitely has a leg up on most normal people playing the game, because you're not going to sit here pretty much it every hour of your waking time uh, trying to progress. I mean, Arlong is ranked 27 in total money, 29 in total levels, 69 in total statues. I'll get to why that number is so saddening for his account in particular. Like, he is he's really high on the leaderboards. Like, he's ranked 9 in Spore Sample. That's crazy. But yeah, there's a lot of... I, there's a lot of elevated aspects to his account you don't expect from someone who's at Endgame. I mean, I do some pretty sweaty things. Don't get me wrong, but I've only been doing them for like a month. Arlong's probably been actively doing it for quite a quite a long time um more so than me and actually we're doing pretty much the same thing we're actually uh i'm stopped over to mike other, other character don't forget about this but i'm actually uh farming golden food on uh blood bones as well what he's doing but i've uh i've delayed long enough i've given enough hype into his account let's go ahead and jump into some of the uh some of his um let's go ahead and jump into his account and sort of go over the video let's see if he's updated it um he did okay he did just update it i got like eight hours of progress let's see what he is uh what he's working on what he needs to be doing and uh yeah <clears throat> let's see what he said he said specifically hey i really like your account review videos i've always wanted an account review myself mainly because i'm curious of what other people think i should work on i think it might be a cool video just because you might be able to provide insight to other people about my progress and decision choices on my account and stuff I am pretty far progressed, but there's a lot of people out there with way better accounts than me, to be honest. Which is true. I mean, it's not wrong. <clears throat> I guess I'm kind of curious on another person's perspective. Um, I, I I made some jokes back and forth. I said, Jesus Christ, I just glanced at your account. I'm also documenting who I need to do reviews for. Are you sure you don't want to review my account? Yeah. Okay, let's go into it. So um, let's go ahead and check his post office. Uh, this is something people don't typically progress uh, to max out. You can max out post office. Um, and actually he hasn't. So post office is something you could probably work on. Uh, I imagine right now it's also, it's pretty important because you're going to need Coliseum tickets to help get, uh, golden food for your, 
Beanstalk. I imagine that's a grind. Uh, most end gamers you're trying to for, work on right now. Let's actually take a look and see what you've done. So you've maxed out Nomwiches, Ham, uh, Grilled Cheese Nomwiches, the Hamter, uh, Hamter Candies, Peanuts. So you've gotten some of the easier stuff done. Uh, you haven't gotten Golden Kebabs done, Golden Jam. Um, Butter Bars is just going to take a while because they're skilling specific. Golden Bread. Uh, these are... Uh, these are some of these uh, golden jam, golden kebabs, uh, I believe golden meat pies and golden bread are all Colosseum specific. So you can kind of like tackle two things at once by um, doing the sixth post office box. If you guys aren't aware, if you do the post office box here, there is a chance that Colosseum tickets, actually I'm doing this inefficiently, there's a chance Colosseum tickets could spawn up here. Uh, if it's, it's somewhat rare. It's not all the time, obviously. I'm just kind of cycling through till you guys see there's a Colosseum ticket so you know I'm not lying about it. But yeah, Colosseum tickets are the way to farm golden food kind of end game. Uh, golden kebabs, uh, golden jam, golden meat pies are really hard to come by, and the only way you can get them, as well as golden bread, the only way you can get them is in Colosseum specifically. Um, yeah, there you go. You see Colosseum ticket. Jesus Christ, that took forever. It took like 28 pens. But yeah, you can see if you go through uh, the, uh, the, the sixth order cosmic carrier, uh, it's all mostly World 4 resources. There's a list in Idol on the wiki you can look up and stockpile and some stuff. Uh, you can farm Colosseum tickets that way to help, uh, you know, get enough Colosseum tickets to farm out golden food because getting 110,000 is extremely difficult. That's going to be something you probably want to work on uh, if you want to try to juice that and then max your account there. So, yeah, there's a little bit of advice there. You already probably know about that. Uh, if I look, yeah, you're out of Colosseum tickets, so you, you're, you're aware of that fact. Um, but also, as a kind of side thing, it also helps um, with your account progression uh, to help max out your myriad crate i did want to look at that as well i just kind of forgot uh if i look at this right here i know i'm far behind you but uh the myriad crate does have a hundred thousand level in it so if you get that up to a hundred thousand you get a bunch of base stat base all efficiency all all skills exp it's really good um it's a really good thing uh but the problem is obviously it takes forever to do in something most or at least some end gamers have focused on um you can I mean, you probably have enough, unless you're trying to green stack silver pens, uh, I would probably recommend using a few uh, in your first and third, uh, especially with the new update that Lava introduced with the quality of life. Now you can actually do it on your mobile phone. Uh, that way it's a lot easier to go through post office. You can just sit there with your thumb, go through, uh, click, you know, get some, um, get, get some free post office boxes. Additionally, with Sovereign Artifacts, uh, you can get some of the ones that increase uh, the amount of boxes you get for completing orders. Uh, that way you can, you know, progress your myriad crate a little bit faster uh, if you have the sovereign artifacts for that done. <clears throat> okay, uh, going back to the characters, so the post office box, yeah. Like I said, you get a bunch of base stat, base all skill efficiency, all skills EXP, that kind of stuff. Um, you also don't, you haven't, <laughs> you don't really post office box enjoy your RU, but you haven't completed a lot of the stuff uh, for, uh, for, for your characters. Uh, DK specifically is all is you can ignore this box because there's a debate uh, where you don't want faster cooldowns because there is a level for uh, Orb of Remembrance where you can overshoot it. You place down two orbs at once, and what it'll do is it'll reset the number of kills on your orb, um, and then once the first orb disappears, it'll again reset the uh, the second orb's kill count. So effectively, you are actually negatively impacting your orb uptime by upgrading this box and upgrading your talent too far. I believe the number is 267 is uh, with post office box. The number is 300 without. So if you don't have post, bo uh, post office box leveled up, your orb of remembrance can go up to level 300. Um, mine's only 267 right now because my elemental sorcerer is not level 500. So I stand to gain one extra minimum talent level. Um, so I'm purposefully not upgrading this to 267 right now for my minimum level to hit 267 so i hit that breakpoint. again that's some end game type knowledge uh you you can look out for so that's the reason his mana uh his faster cooldowns is uh, the magician starter pack on his dk specifically is not maxed out because he would negatively benefit he wouldn't benefit at all from upgrading it but yeah overall your post optics is uh kind of behind i would still recommend upgrading these boxes I mean, specific, I mean, the, I guess I, blacksmith box is pretty important, especially if you're trying to push crystal spawn chance. I imagine you probably have some issues with that because you probably already used your hydrogen upgrades and your gilded stamp. But I mean, you can max this out, get extra production speed, craft some extra stuff. You can probably get like a billion 
uh, stack of any of those resources pretty easily. Um, but you should probably max these out specifically um, because it's always a good idea to push uh, levels in your skilling. Uh, that way you can get a little bit more talent points. I mean, not that it matters to you, but eventually um, it'll help with um, with Rift uh, specifically. We know this is kind of speculative right now. Again, this is going into theory of endgame. It's kind of speculative uh, to assume that there's going to be bonuses beyond 1,000 mastery in skills in the Rift. Uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, Rift right here, skill mastery. You get bonuses for bringing your skills up to level 1,000. You get all skill XP as the last bonus. It's I, The reason I say it's speculative to think there might be bonuses beyond 1,000 because Lab specifically came out with bonuses um, in the Jade Emporium at level 700, 1400, and 2100, which you can unlock through Jade Coins, uh, that give you extra gems to boost your account. I imagine Lava is following the same thinking for the other skills, and it might follow. So it's always a good idea to at least get the post office um, done. That way you get a little bit extra like mining AFK gain, mining efficiency. That way it's easier to level up in the future. Uh, same thing with Myriad Crate. Obviously, it gives you skill efficiency. Uh, it gives you all skill EXP, base all stat, which inevitably increases your efficiency. So it's something you can think about. You don't actively have to do it, but it you know it would it would help you in the future if there's some like World Seven update or something where you expands Rift a little bit. Again, that's really speculative. Uh, that's a little bit of nitpicking, but you might be able to do that. Uh, yeah. Star signs. Um, I don't know actively what you're trying to do, but it looks like you have star signs set up correctly, uh, at least to, at least to most degree. My, I suppose my one uh, nitpick might be, I might, might do some calculations between golden food, if that might be better than mob respawn rate, because of the, um, the dumplings. Those give you AFK. AFK rate, um, AFK gain rate. So golden food, if it's at 40% because of the star sign, might actually be better than mob respawn rate. Something you want to look out for. Uh, inventory, it looks like you have you have some alternate gear uh, in your character slots. Probably just saving for like, <laughs> what the fuck is this? Uh, probably just saving for uh, like skill snapshot and stuff. But you're almost done with your golden cheese farm, so good for you. Chips, uh, yeah, pretty much everyone's kitted out uh, in chips. Uh, I'm assuming you don't have uh, you don't have the other Omega Star Sign thing uh, doubler for your characters, so I mean that kind of sucks. But yeah, talents, yeah. I mean most of the important talents I'm I'm seeing. Oh, you got one right here. That's not two forty five. Most of, the, uh, most of the important talents I'm seeing are 245. You got Apocalypse Zao. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can try to... S I imagine you're probably waiting for Sovereign Artifacts to try to max that out once you get um, Sovereign Fury. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you're doing good in the... Um, I mean, obviously you're doing good in the damage and skilling aspect of things. How's your gear looking? So some of your gear isn't upgraded to even Marble Glass. So you still have some Dreadlow stuff. So again, going back to what I said, uh, getting your skilling level up is also going to be really important for pushing the higher tools as well. Uh, getting into God Shard tools is going to be something you um, you may or may not want to do depending on what you're looking for. Uh, but again, these are stat sticks, and it's it's always important to upgrade them because you are going to get more upgrade slots. You, I mean, yeah, actually, there's no net downside from what I can see from upgrading these, so you should probably um, focus on your skilling a little bit upgrade your tools when you can. I imagine uh, doing two minute claims on your archers is not that big of a deal, um, considering where your account is, so you are able to push these tools a little bit higher. Uh, again, that might be a grind you, sh um, you maybe may want to focus on. Uh, the other thing I see here, you don't have World 4 Splicers on all your um, all your characters. Uh, obviously, the resource cost of it's really expensive because it takes 200 lost batteries, which are notoriously kind of hard to farm. Um, so you could uh, spend some time, upgrade your uh, Splicers to World 4, Again, these are stat sticks. You're missing out on a little bit of stats for your characters. It's like five stats each and a little bit of defense. Um, it'll just help you get more skill efficiency, more damage, more money for your bubo, obviously. So yeah, something you work on a little bit there. Um, <clears throat> looks like you got boost food set up kind of correctly, so no complaints there. My only complaint is I don't know why you're uh, doing all EFK gain, gain rates on your DK if you're activating him. Um, you may benefit... I mean, it's possible you may benefit from another food as opposed to this. I don't know. I mean, just nitpicking. I mean, I 
I, I don't know what food you might benefit from. Maybe the maybe the coins. Uh, but you are killing blood bones, so I mean, yeah, whatever. Uh, I'm very curious about your stats. So you have 65,000 strength. This is what I mean by he's a real endgame player. Uh, he's in the quadrillions of damage for his DK. Uh, he has a 3% crystal spawn chance. Um, let's see his boobo. What's that at? He's 64,000 wisdom. Uh, yeah, 750 trillion. He's got um, 3,900 uh, 3, trillion or 3.9 Q on his Siege Breaker. So yeah, I imagine... I actually don't know if you have... Um, like damage uh, cards on, but I mean, this is probably like the lower end threshold of his damage right now. Obols. Obols is something. Uh, I do want to look at Obols and see where you're at. So you have all stats. Yeah, your Bubo's pretty kitted out and some pretty juiced Obols. Um, let's look at the family page, actually. It's something I want to look at. Go to account, see the Obol page here. So he's got the right drop rate setup going on. He's trying to get hyper six Obols as well. Uh, I think I honestly don't know where you get those. I think they're gem shop purchases. Uh, but yeah, they are better than pop opals. Um, you generally don't want to upgrade pop opals past silver. Uh, getting the triple sixes up to gold is way better. Uh, it has more drop rate than the uh, golden pop opals. Similarly, you want the um, the platinum and the sparkle uh, dimension ones to be uh, the uh, sixes as well. Let's go ahead and look at bribes. Uh, do you have... It doesn't look like you have the bribes from World 6 yet. Um, from the Jade Emporium. Where, where am I? Hello. There we go. Jade Emporium. There we go. Where are you at with this? So it looks like you got up to the new critters. Uh, have you viled that to 13 yet? Actually, you haven't gotten them. So if you haven't... I mean, you have the critter. You just haven't unlocked them. Uh, the vial, at least. I hope you're pushing that because it gives you some really insane bonuses. Um, this is going to be something for pretty much everyone to push, but it gives you multiplicative artifact, fine chance, sigil speed, cooking speed, construction build rate. It's extremely good. It's probably one of the best vials. Um, I'm a little bit biased towards stamps, so I'll always say that stamps are really good. So, you know, this one and the platinum ore one. Uh, but I can't deny the power that is the turtle. <laughs> like, it's extremely good. So yeah, I mean, the sooner you unlock this, the better your account's going to be. I imagine you're... Uh, let's see if you have your trap set up for them. Actually, yeah, you are almost... You almost got some. So yeah. So yeah, I'd unlock that vial probably as soon as possible. It also gives your booba a little bit more damage once she gets up to level 4. Let's go ahead and look at stamps. So, stamps. Um, I imagine at this point in time, the only way you can really upgrade your stamps is going to be through the hydrogen stamp producer and the gilded stamp production. Um... There's obvious money sink ones such as the stat Wall Street and the stat graph stamp. Uh, if I remember correctly, you have a lot of money, so you could sink some more money into upgrading those uh, those stamps. Again, that's going to give you more damage, more skill efficiency, more money. I mean, it stats themselves scale incredibly well. And if you if you didn't know, if anyone didn't know, these um, these upgrades themselves are um, are base stats. Uh, you can test it yourself. Uh, the labs themselves give you a two times bonus to these stamps, and the uh, the pristine charms which you get from sneaking also give you a one point two five times bonus. So if you factor that in, you should only be getting like four levels from one level of stack graph stamp, but it actually gives you like eight, nine, ten, depending on your percent all stat. So it it does scale with percent all stat, which means this is base stat. Pretty much every single one of these stats here you see are base stats, and it does increase your damage, your money your skill efficiency for World 1, World 2. So it's really important you try to juice uh, the stat stamps out specifically. Um, as well, you can go back and upgrade some of the earlier stamps as well. Ingots themselves are um, are something that's obviously difficult, but once you reach endgame and you have like a, uh, a Rubified God Shard, Rubified God, God Shard card, and you have the forge, key, uh, forge Cap at speed. Once you have the Bribe from World 1 to increase your Forge Capacity as well, it's much easier to push the uh, push ingots, so pushing Book Stamps specifically to help increase your Wisdom. Overall, like I said, again, going back to it, more damage, more money, more skill efficiency. Things you can start to min-max a little bit as well. You can also start to use uh, Gilded Stamp and Stamp Producer to upgrade some of the earlier stamps as well that require materials. Uh, I see you've been doing that for things like the Swag Swingy, stu uh, swag swingy Tool, uh, for things like Mason Jar, for uh, for Multi-Tool Stamp, for Ladle Stamp. Um, again, going back to it, these two stamps are extremely important. 
Uh, for anyone watching, I highly recommend upgrading these stamps as much as you can because you always need cooking efficiency. And multi-tool stamp is a great way to scale that as well as ladle stamp. And I mean, I can't complain that you have almost 13,000 stamp level. That's pretty cracked. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's move on a little bit. So yeah, I mean, you could... Uh, I don't know what you're building towards, uh, but I imagine you're waiting for the hydrogen stamp production to upgrade some stamps a little bit further than what they are right now. Um, my best guess, your biggest focus right now is probably on forge stamp, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, uh, because everyone just about needs to juice out forge max capacity if you're that endgame uh, to help you um, increase the amount of uh, god shard bars you're able to print per hour. Um, and just to clarify, for those who don't know sort of some of the mechanics, uh, let me actually pop over to an archer so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. I, I kind of referenced this a little bit here and there in some of the videos, but no one's really end game enough to really talk about it. Uh, but this is a useful tool, even early game, if you want to use it. So there is uh, there is a talent that archers have called Smelts in Every Day. What this does is every time you kill a monster, uh, you have a chance to proc this, which gives you four seconds or five seconds, whatever your... Um, uh, whatever this talent says on the base page, uh, that many seconds of instant forge uh, progress. Once you hit world three, uh, I do believe this is impacted by uh, by kill per kill as well as multi kill. I might be wrong. One of those might be wrong. Um, but either way, whenever you click off your archer and come back every two minutes, this caps out um, this like progress because what uh, what kind of works is the forge itself works in conjunction with the con uh, with the automation arm. Uh, there is an upgrade in World 3 with the automation arm to reset ore. Um, where is it? The forge conveyor belt automatically refills all forge slots with ores, oils from your storage, and deposits all bars. So what it does is it'll deposit the bars pretty much every single day at your daily reset. But when this is out, it'll take from your storage and replenish it, which is really important for this talent specifically because when you hit two minutes and you're able to claim again your AFK gains on your archer, it'll, take, uh, it'll use up... The forge capacity because you've killed like a million mobs or whatever. Uh, archers have really high kill caps because multi kill with conjunction with your speed gives you more damage. Uh, you're able to hit pretty high kills per hour or kills per two minutes, which maxes out the amount of bars you smelt into uh, ores you smelt into bars, and the automation arm will just replenish the ore. So uh, if I I'll just go ahead and waste a few candy so you guys can see what I'm talking about. I was about 41 marble bars. And yes, I don't have oil. Don't bag me for that. I know I don't have oil in there. It's on purpose. I'm just stockpiling it. But if I were to use a candy um, and go back, I killed 10 million mobs. So obviously this procced quite a lot. Uh, but it kind of caps out because I only have this many marble bars that's, uh, that print during that time. So I gained 40 marble bars in that uh, one hour claim. The two minute claims, um, they're kind of the minimum necessary to hit that forge capacity to start smelting bars. So if I were to spend more time candy, um, I would print more bars. And that's how you're able to hit level 13 of the copper uh, copper ingot vial, the iron ingot vial, the god shard vial even. Actually, this is, I can probably level that up if I wanted to, but I might want to save that for the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the DK thing I'm trying to do. But yeah, you can, um, you can do that to help progress your bars. I wouldn't recommend that if you're early game because you have better things to be doing than do two-minute claims on your archers. Um, it wouldn't hurt to do it, but I mean, you're, I, the problem I find with most early game people is they're kind of scatterbrained in what to do, and I don't really recommend doing it if you don't, if you don't have a set goal in mind you can complete in the next few days. That is the, thick, is the end of it. Let's go into bubbles. Okay, so I kind of cheated with your review. I did look at some of your alchemy, and I noticed one thing immediately pop into my head when I saw it. The fact you don't have 90% star 2 EXP or even 95 star 2 EXP is mind-boggling to me. So <laughs> what star 2 EXP does, it's, it kind of works in conjunction with skinny ocal vial, with onyx statues, with the artifact that gives you more onyx, um, onyx bonus. But basically what it does is it... Uh, say you have, let me open paint like the pirate software guy. Um, say you have a bar of progress for uh, for statues. Say you're at zero right here and you need like 10,000 statues to hit like the next level. What Starchy EXP says is instead of, uh, say I deposit 10,000 statues and get it, instead of going straight back to zero, it instead goes straight back to here. So what it effectively does is it gives you more statues every time you deposit it. So 
um, you're missing out on like 1.7% or something from a 90% bubble capacity. So I would recommend doing it uh, because you're, I mean, just about any point in the game, no one's done with their statue farm. It's always something you can go back and do. This helps you min-max a little bit further to get more bonuses, especially with uh, with new worlds when they come out. You're just missing out on a little bit extra bonus from depositing your statues because you're missing that. So I would absolutely recommend trying to do that. And you're probably able to push uh, V statues a little bit higher, probably another one or two, maybe five levels, if you were to go back and do that and go back to statue farming a little bit. So yeah, get that up to like 90% is my recommendation. The fact is not kind of crazy to me. But yeah, some of these bubbles are kind of useless. I'm uh, not going to lie, because Anvilnomics, I imagine you have your Anvil points, and this really only um, only impacts this section right here when you're buying monster materials. I suppose if Lava adds World 5 monsters, um, you'll be in a better position because it takes less of those materials to do. But again, uh, this bubble isn't something you really have to uh, level up if you're trying to progress alchemy. It's not the most important bubble. Um, you should be focusing on other bubbles if you're trying to level up. Uh, as well, so something I want to point out with Arlong's account, something you are able to do um, once you reach sort of World 6 territory and your skilling's kind of high enough, you can do something that he and I actually share in common. We hourly click some bubbles. He probably has higher prints, so he's able to do more than me. But basically what Arlong's been doing for a while, you can see it's pretty evident in some of his bubbles that he does hourly clicks. What that means is every single time his 3D printer procs, uh, he gets enough resources to click an upgrade for the bubble. So with my, uh, if my 3D printer proc, I'd get over 1,000 uh, uh, 1, or 1 billion oak logs, I'd be able to level up Roid Region. You see my level is pretty high, obviously not as high as his, but the reason his some of his bubbles are that high is because he has a high enough print capacity to do that, to click every single hour. So he has Roid Ragin up, he has Swift Steppin, he has Staple Genius, um, he has Hardy Diggy, he has Drunk Tools, um, as well his Cooking Roadkill is extremely high, it's 98% capacity. He has Labrain Tools up, he's probably able to hourly click this with the Serials. Um, Hocus Choppus, I imagine you're probably not um, hourly clicking because I don't think you can hourly click Nails, you're probably adamant this. Um, Mage's Best is something, uh, these, two, uh, these three bubbles right here, you're probably able to hourly click because of an extremely high Spore Cap um, print through V-Man, I imagine. Uh, and you can also hourly click something like Severe Purple, which requires uh, Void Ore. Uh, again, he has this up to 99% capacity. Um, it's extremely hard to get bubbles up to this capacity. Um, you're effectively hitting the hard mathematical cap uh, when you hit um, 99%. Uh, because as you can see, it's taking him 2,400 more levels in Premagreen to hit that point. So he's only able to hit this because it's something he can hourly click. Uh, you obviously can't hourly click the, uh, the the Jade Scarabs here or or the, the Donuts here. Severe Purple is really prime position to be able to hit that 1 billion, uh, the hourly print cap because mining efficiency is extremely easy to hit when you're hourly clicking bubbles. Because you have things like Hardy Diggy, which are really easy to hourly click, and Strong Tools, which are also really easy to hourly click. So your prints for Copper Ore, I imagine, are probably through the roof because of that. And yeah, he has a, uh, a 2.4, almost 2.4 billion base print for Copper Ore. Uh, so I imagine Void is probably uh, not that far behind either if I see it. Yeah, I mean, he's able to just put it in one, and he has enough to hourly click it. So yeah. Uh, he has 123 million base Void Ore print, so that is extremely good. Also, um, I see your printer sample is pretty high, and I imagine you're probably able to wean off of um, Royal Sampler if you aren't already. Actually, I haven't checked that. Rares. Yeah, I mean, you still have Royal Sampler. I mean, no, you know, there's no downside to having it at this late stage in the game, but you are able to wean off of this if you if you want to. Um, yeah, I suppose it's something you, if you want to look into it, you can. Uh, he has enough, I believe, Royal Sampler, uh, like print sample rate to just completely take it off and not worry about it all that much. Um, let's go back into his account, go back to World 2 and talk about his vials. So vials, uh, you don't have some things at level 13, which I don't fully expect you to because they're really hard to do. Um, red salts specifically, um, the... Shiny frog, the poison frog, uh, you know, the rest of the salt, pearl seltzers, um, hamters. Now, some things that are easier for you to level, uh, to hit level 13 on would be the bars. 
Um, I say easier, obviously it's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of time and a lot of two minute claims. But I mean, that's something you could really try to push if you're trying to min max. Also, the souls one shouldn't be that hard um, comparatively. Uh, the, uh, what, what monsters are these? The Sky Doggy Spirits and the Royal Cola. Those vials, you, you're probably, you're, you are close to getting to 13. So, I mean, that'll just give you more overall bonus for your account here. Also, why don't you have this at level 13? That's something you should absolutely get this up to level 13. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's some there's some debate there about decreasing the alchemy bubble cost. I, I get it. But I mean, you, you're you probably going to get more benefit from upgrading the vials than you would uh, upgrading this. Uh, not upgrading this is what I mean. Uh, Arcane Shop, I imagine you actually don't have all these maxed out. Wow, that's sad. Uh I mean, are you even clicking on Arcade at this point? I don't even know. Um, sigils. Okay, let's talk about sigils from a non-endgame kind of account. So theoretically, there's a lot of sigils that are important. Uh, some are more important than others. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about them. So uh, the base stat ones are pretty important. As we said, base stat scales off of all stat percent. So the more base stat you get, you get a lot more... Uh, total stat. So it gives you more damage, more skill efficiency, more money, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, there is an upgrade in the Jade Emporium to get a third level of sigils. Uh, so you can upgrade these even further. But once you get past these four, um, things start to fall off kind of hard. So the other good ones to focus on would be the stamp uh, upgrade cost, would be the cycle speed for refinery, drop rate, uh, sigil charge speed is extremely important, the bonus of golden food, uh, reliquid regenerate, and maybe uh, Jade Coin Gain as well. Those would be some of the more important ones to upgrade, um, as well as Skill AFK Gainer. I kind of forgot about that one, sorry. But yeah, some of these sigils, you can kind of level up once just so you can progress it, but don't level up any further. Like this one right here, like at, by the time you unlock this sigil, it's completely useless. Like there's no reason you should upgrade this. So, I mean, he, he understands, I mean, yeah. When you get to sigils, when you get to the point of sigils, and once you've like completed alchemy, like you've gotten your bubbles unlocked, you've gotten um, like your liquid regenerate extremely high. Uh, once you unlock like your boost cauldron, um, you know these the, the, the boost things here, um, you can start worrying about sigils and progressing sigils. I would recommend uh, going in this order. Try to try to allocate characters like uh, like he has here to push the vials. Um, and just unlock the later bonuses. Once you get to some of these, uh, you can take some characters off of cauldrons or liquid regen if you're not pushing Bubo, and uh, progress some of the some of the sigils that are more important. Like I said, the stamp max level, uh, refinery speed, drop rate, that kind of stuff, uh, to help you know get a little bit extra bonuses for your account. Especially with the advent of World Six, the bonus of golden food through emoji veggie is extremely important. And let's talk about <clears throat> let's talk about islands. How's this doing? So. I don't think I can really glean much from this. Uh, so he's maxing out skill efficiency through Shimmer, which is something I did want to see. So the best thing in Shimmer is going is most likely skill efficiency. Um, you can make some argument about the base stats that you get, but overall skill efficiency is extremely important, again, to help you juice out your prints and stuff. <clears throat> this is uh, something you probably have on hold right now is the Fractal Island. Um, there are some bonuses that you get uh, that are somewhat important, but not overall the most important thing to be progressing and upgrading. Uh, but if you kind of go through World 6 and you've unlocked just about everything in the Jade Emporium, you've gotten everything, uh, every single one of the bonuses for magic bean crops and farming, once you've complete uh, completed summoning, then you can think about doing Fractal. Um, the problem with uh, Fractal right now is there's a lot of opportunity cost to staying AFK and not doing literally anything with your characters and just trying to push this to get the uh, the trophy. Don't get me wrong. The trophy is extremely good. I can't remember what the bonuses are. I think it has like AFK gain rates on it. But the trophy is extremely hard to get. It's extremely low chance. So it's not worth spending your time candy or your nothing time to progress this island for little to no rewards. Yeah. Uh, There's not really much for me to say on those specifically. Now, refinery. Okay, so obviously his refinery is pretty cracked. Um, he's at the point where he has 
let me let me step back and sort of re- explain how the refinery works for those who don't fully understand it. So refinery, the way it works is <clears throat> it'll there's cycles. So every X minutes, the first page of refinery will go off. Then the second page of refinery has a longer cycle time. I think like four times or five times the cycle rate. Uh, So it takes that amount of time to progress one cycle. Every single cycle will cost X amount of resources. And um, you can increase the cycle rate through things like uh, lab, through uh, sigils, through stamps. Yeah, stamps. Uh, You can increase the cycle rate to help you produce more salts per hour. But really the the only way you can increase cycle rate, or rather increase your salt generation, is by leveling it up uh, by getting your salt level high enough to where it caps at 1 million. We'll get to that in a second. And thirdly, uh, through Omnifow. Omnifow, well, and DK. DK also gives you cycles. But the way Omnifow works is it has a 15% chance to proc a variety of different bonuses. And it can, I believe, proc multiple. I've seen it proc multiple, although this might be coincidental. I don't know. But either way, it has a 15% chance to proc uh, one of a variety of bonuses when you collect AFK time, one of those being refinery. So if you link to Omnifow or you have Dute and you're automatically linked to Omnifow, you can proc refinery. And that's how you progress really high levels of refinery. The other way you can really progress high levels of refinery is getting your um, your like salt cap up to 1 million. So refinery will scale until the salt uh, power cap is 1 million. Then it'll stop scaling that, but it'll increase the amount of resources it consumes, which increases the amount of salts it generates in a cycle. So it'll stop increasing the max uh, time it takes to produce the salts to at 100% capacity. Instead, just increase the amount of resources it eats, uh, which in turn increases the amount of power it produces per cycle. So as he levels up redox salts, the amount of time it takes to rank it up actually goes down. So eventually, in the way distant future, you can hit a point where you can like hourly click redox salts, theoretically. It's way, way in the future because even now at rank 142, obviously he's taking probably 14 hours, I imagine, to rank this up. If he collects enough AFK time, he probably can do it like every six hours, seven hours or so, uh, if he gets luckily, uh, lucky with Omnifow procs. But yeah, uh, theoretically, you could hit a point where you could like hourly click redox salts, which inevitably does increase like your DK damage and stuff but it would be eating a lot of resources and there'll eventually be a break point where you're producing less resources through hourly prints than you are uh, producing to sustain the refinery, which is like thousands and thousands of uh, redox salt levels. But yeah, it's something you don't have to worry about. If you ever had questions for yourself as to why my refinery is taking so long to level up, it's because it's increasing the max cap um, every single time it levels up until it hits 1 million. And then it'll start to scale down uh, the amount of time it takes to rank it up. So yeah, just a little insight how the refinery works and how you're able to progress really high levels of redox salts without wasting literally years of your time. <clears throat> okay, Adam Collider. So, I mean, he's he's done a lot uh, to his Adam Collider. He has uh, level 20 boron is the most important one. Helium stackers level eight, which is insane. Fluoride's maxed out. Uh, has neon damage only uh, level 14. His snails up to level four. Um, so I mean, he's producing a lot of atoms, as we saw from his printer. Uh, he's a lot of things. He is able to print uh, pretty much every single hour, not only to hourly click, but to produce a lot of atoms. You can see every single day he's producing 503,000 atoms. So he is pretty juiced at this point. Uh, there's not really much I can say regarding your atom, uh, atom collider. I talk about this extensively in pretty much every single video for people who are struggling with it. Uh, but your biggest focuses, uh, if you're not him, would be focusing on getting boron. <clears throat> the next one would just be getting like one level in oxygen. That way you benefit from getting the maximum talent level by 10. This does not scale per level. The minimum talent does. <clears throat> but yeah, the biggest focus for pretty much anyone starting out Atom Collider and getting Atom Generation would be Boron. Uh, because it allows you to spend more atoms per day uh, to upgrade Boron to, <clears throat> in Alchemy, upgrading bubbles in Alchemy to progress your Alchemy even further, which, you know, as you know, helps your account just about every aspect. Damage, skilling, whatever it is. Uh, alchemy will help you, and Boron is the way to progress alchemy. Equinox. Um, he has just about everything maxed out. The only thing he doesn't have maxed out is drop rate and Equinox symbols. All of his challenges are done. Um, yeah, he's just, he's time-gated, so there's nothing really to say here. Uh, one of the, one of the, um, 
uh, later bonuses you get from alchemy uh, from equinox is equinox symbols which gives you one to all talent levels as far as i know this is this does not impact uh some of voidwalker skills um but it it would impact the things that do get their minimum raised by things like rift slug or elemental sorcerer i i often made this mistake this impacted like eclipse for v-man but i don't believe it does um but this just raises the minimum talent level that you have. So kind of going back to what I mentioned with Orb of Remembrance, I don't want this to hit 267. Uh, Equinox symbol would upgrade it, so it's something I got to think about for the distant future when I do unlock that, because I don't have that dream unlocked yet. <clears throat> going out of buildings, uh, what are you working on here? So um, I don't know what your build rate is. Let's go and look at construction. He's about 6.5, 6.6 billion build rate, so he's doing pretty good there. Uh, his player XP bonus is only 103k. Uh, his it, it's looking like his minimum cog EXP is about 43%. But I mean that's on his uh, directional cogs giving him EXP and build rate. So I mean, yeah, you could um, try to going back to alchemy. You can increase cog production speed. Um, you're only at level 314, so you could upgrade this even further to help really juice out cogs, to really uh, hard farm cogs, getting more EXP. That's something of a lengthy grind, but something you can do to help boost it out. That way you're able to construct things even faster. <clears throat> okay, back to building. So he's on the grind right now to get um, most of his towers up to level 90, which I believe right now is the hard cap. Uh, he has a lot of his, uh, a lot of the towers up, are pretty up there. Uh, Poisonic Elder is level 83. His Stormcaller is level 89. He's almost there. Um, but yeah, that's currently what his grind is. Uh, the reason you want to upgrade these past level 50 is because, uh, going back to the Atom Collider, it is... Where is it? This upgrade. <clears throat> this one right here. All Wizard Towers and Constructions get plus 40 max levels. Each uh, level above level 50 gives you a 2% damage bonus. So his Wizard Towers are getting a 544 percent damage increase which allows them to push his warship tower defense extremely high <clears throat> if we go to it uh he's level 200 goblin gore fest uh, 170 acorn assault 160 cl um, clash of pans you only have a 130 breezy battle so going back to vials um it'll be a lot easier for you to redo this battle um to try to push this up even further um if you're you should be able to hit like wave 140. I almost hit wave 140 when I wasn't uh, when I wasn't even on my Beastmaster. So I mean, this is fairly achievable for you. You might even be able to hit 150, 160. So I recommend going to do that because it not only impacts your uh, soul gain, but it also impacts things like essence gain, uh, jade gain, skill exp, bit multiplier, cooking speed, uh, sailing speed, damage. It impacts a lot of things. So it's something you can do uh, even further to min max a little bit. Prayers. He's got skill dimwit maxed out. Zerg rushing in. Pretty good. Uh, never run fiber of absence, as I always say in my videos. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you got the important ones maxed out. So nothing really to say here. Uh, for those who don't know, some of the prayers are really bad. Um, specifically fiber of absence. Never run this prayer. Um, unless you're doing rift and you can't hit multi-kill, uh, you can run this. But almost in every single scenario, do not run this. You always want to run balance of pain instead. Because in just about most scenarios, you're probably hitting multi-kill. <clears throat> um, as well, Midas Mind is an extremely good prayer. It gives you a bunch of drop rate. This is additive. Uh, it's all it's always useful on DK um, for you know statue farming, for gold food farming, that kind of stuff. Uh, the other good ones are Jaw Breaker. This gives you multiplicative coin gain. Uh, Skilled Dimwit's always really good for getting higher prints. Zerg Rushigan is really important for AFK gain rate. Again, for higher prints. Uh, some of the worst ones obviously are Unending Energy. I always recommend taking this off because you're more often not going to forget it and you're going to. Um, it's going to hurt a lot from using this. <clears throat> okay, traps. We did mention traps. I imagine you're probably on auto claim, but again, going back to it, uh, you want to get this vial up to level 13 as, as quickly as possible. Uh, not only to give you vial mastery, but to give you all the bonuses this vial specifically gives you. It's extremely good. <clears throat> going on the salt lick. Is this maxed out? It's maxed out. Cool. Uh, salt lick gives you some extremely important bonuses for those who don't know. Most importantly, obviously, refinery cycle speed. Uh, printer sample rate, uh, some class and skill EXP, really, really important as the max talent level from library. Uh, liquid uh, rate and capacity for liquids and alchemy is extremely important as you add into endgame. Uh, points earned uh, during worship tower defense helps you push later waves as well. This is not that important. Uh, Multi-kill is pretty good, and the total damage is also pretty good. Uh, but the best one, 
definitely early game, the samples, uh, max talents are extremely important. Refinery speed is also good. Min maxi, uh, the points and tower defense is also really, really important to do. We're going to cooking. What's your cooking speed? E56. So he is pretty juiced out. Uh, he doesn't have max level plates because max level plates are extremely hard to get. <clears throat> Let's do a pass of it and see how much time it's taking you to progress some of this stuff. So I imagine you have the food lust upgrade right now, and that's why a lot of the ladle cost is low. But um, yeah, let's take this down to zero and see where you're at. So some of these meals are only taking like one or two ladles to do. As always, I'd recommend taking like a stack of probably in your case, like 300 to 1000 each and just going through being overzealous and upgrading these. Because if you may have forgotten, um, the V-Man talent uh, blood marrow does increase your cooking speed for every level of meal that you have. So increasing your meal level will also... Uh, just, you know, very minutely increase your total speed if you're, uh, for these. I imagine at some point you're kind of le uh, leaving these upgrades to no meal left behind. So what you could do instead, kind of an end game tactic, is level up the meals that you don't want to get hit by no meal left behind. So what I mean by that is, say for example, you want a burned marshmallow upgrade. It's level 65. What you could do is upgrade Bill Jack Pepper up to 66, that way it's not affected by that chance to get no meal left behind it. Um, uh, you're kind of at, um, you're, you're probably better off uh, letting like Nyan Borger upgrade. Um, so you may want to spend some ladles and upgrading Bill Jack Pepper um, because right now it looks like it's targeted by no meal left behind. Um, and, you know, crop evo chance is not bad, but you can use ladles to upgrade it to be a little bit more efficient to let it hit things like Nyan Borger uh, plum cakes, yummy peach ring, or burned marshmallow. Those are probably the more important meals to get hit by no, no meal left behind because they're the four latest. And so you're overall, you're going to spend less ladles letting uh, no meal left behind upgrade these as opposed to Bill Jack Pepper. So yeah, absolutely. Um, go through your meals, see which one's the lowest level and try to like min max your ladle efficiency there. That way you're not, um, not leaving some meals behind. Um, and letting Nomi left behind get an auto upgrade of the harder ones. Perfect. Going on to breeding. I imagine I don't need to talk a lot in depth about breeding. <clears throat> uh, I mean, yeah, you got, yeah, I mean, you have all the meals upgrades. The territory spice battle is not a problem. Um, specifically here, um, if you're, yeah, that doesn't impact you. <laughs> so, I mean, there's not a lot for me to say there. You have your arena done, obviously. Uh, pets. What are your shiny pets at? So let's apply like a threshold of six and see where you're at. So the important one for pretty much anyone starting out shiny pet breeding would be the faster shiny pet level up rate. So green mushrooms, woodboard, crescent spread, and quenchies. Um, those are extremely important because it helps you faster push shiny pets. Let's, let's go back to the threshold of seven. So infinite star signs. Um, if you aren't uh, having everything already at infinite, uh, go ahead and finish out that grind that we get a little bit of extra bonus uh, for things you can't equip for your characters. Uh, total damage. This is something you can probably eke out. I see your frogs levels. Is that is that real? No. Shiny, shiny level 5. So, I mean, you have some stuff you can actually get a little bit more damage to eke out here. You know, the gelatinous cuboid. You only have <clears throat> shiny level 1. You haven't really touched this. So, yeah, you can do that. You can also get a little bit faster uh, uh, refinery speed to help reduce some of the time your refinery is taking to upgrade uh, through whale and board bean. Uh, you have a lot of bonuses for meals, so you're doing pretty good there. What actually is your level there? Bonuses for meals. So level 8 and 7. That is really good. Let's go back to 7. Um, this is also a big one. Uh, Multi-kill per tier. This will help with uh, getting even... If you want to push the leaderboard, actually, you can get more spore cap from uh, increasing multi-kill per tier. Because Baby Boo is only level 5. This will take you not a lot of time to upgrade, because I imagine you have the Crop Depot upgrade for um for shiny pet level upgrade uh, level up rate so you can do that push this even higher uh base efficiency is also really important if you want to push your prints this is probably something you can focus on think of this like multi-tool uh multi-tool stamp you spend a lot of time and resources upgrading that so why wouldn't you upgrade these as well these are really really important base stats as well these are less important because they scale a lot slower base critters as well obviously less important because i mean you your trapping, I imagine, is pretty juiced out as it is. Um, you, re you really aren't suffering from classy XP, I imagine, because your grind time is so high. 
Um, you, you don't need tab talent points because you have the alchemy bubble, so you can ignore these. Skill EXP as well. Um, this actually might impact you because like I said, uh, you want to focus on getting your uh, your tools up to a high enough level. And I saw some of your tools, uh, some of your characters aren't, uh, you aren't, aren't using some of those tools because obviously the resource is kind of high. I don't know if you have the skill level for it. At least some of the characters maybe. I mean, worship specifically maybe. Uh, something you can probably work on a little bit, um, but you can probably you can probably get some benefit from upgrading your shiny pets uh, for skilly XP specifically, just to help juice out worship a little bit. Uh, let's go back to seven. Where was I? I kind of skipped down. Ooh, big one, big one, big one, big one is summoning EXP gain. Okay, so. This is something that I've been thinking about. Maybe you can experiment with it, but summoning EXP gain is extremely important. Why? Uh, because of this. It's really hard to push summoning levels uh, because you, your familiar kind of caps out uh, every single day through world six bonuses. So you can only get so much EXP. I'm like I'm level 54. So every little bit of summoning EXP that you're able to get um, is gonna be extremely important for pushing high levels. So you get even higher star sign bonuses. This gives you more golden food effect, more drop rarity, more jade gain, more twin stealth. Everything is heavily impacted by Seraph Cosmos. It even gives you AFK gain rate. I imagine there is uh, thresholds like there are for drop rate uh, where uh, the more summoning levels you have, the more star sign bonuses you get and you get more impact of star signs. Like it probably hit, needs to hit like a threshold for it to be effective. So for you to increase your summoning EXP gain here uh, through breeding would be one avenue you can start to scale that. Obviously, it's going to take a while still to upgrade summoning to even higher levels, but this would be something you can try to upgrade, especially since they're only level 4 and 5, which for you shouldn't be terribly hard to push uh, if you're not pushing things that are more important, like I said, for like uh, maybe total damage, refinery cycle speed. Um, like I, said, I don't really think you should be upgrading base critters per trap right now. Um, it's I don't know what your traps are set to, actually. So, I mean, it might be worth it, it might not. But... Something you can definitely think about once you get this grind done. Sorry, I'm just trying to see what the trap timer is set to. I actually don't know. But yeah. Um, something you can think about regarding star signs and summoning specifically is the refinery. Uh, not refinery. Uh, the breeding, the shiny pets for getting summoning EXP. That might be able to help you push uh, higher summoning EXP. Also upgrading the stamp might also help push that as well. Uh, and you'll be able to kind of scale the star signs a little bit. Uh, again, it'll take a while. Obviously, I'm talking in like months time frame, but we're getting to the nitpicky minor stuff that actually does impact your account quite heavily uh, as well. These were the uh, jewels I'm talking about specifically for uh, for World 6 with the Jade Emporium. Uh, these are upgraded. Um, every uh, You get these automatically every 700, 1400, and 21 in lab. Uh, overall like account level I believe and you can also buy these in the chip rotation but they're extremely expensive I think they take like 10,000 white spice which is one of the world six spices you're never going to get that anytime soon so you're more reliant trying to push lab exp and divinity exp at the same time kind of doing this uh, but it does give you a lot of bonuses like gives you slab sovereignty uh, which is more slab bonuses higher effective jewels like that that's that's insane uh it gives you more crop depot bonuses, which again ties back to shiny pets and gives you more shiny pet bonuses. Like, it's crazy. Okay, on to World 5. Uh, you have, you're, you're on the grind, I see, for sovereign artifacts. Um, you don't have sovereign fury relic yet. I imagine you're trying to push that. One thing you can do, um, something I did, um, you can, if your sailing's not fast enough, I imagine it probably is, but it's, if it's not, you can go and, uh, Try to get Sovereign AD Tablet. It's one of the easier ones to get. That way you can get more sailing speed. Ash and Urn will give you more divinity. As we get into more, we're, as we get into the necessity for God ranks, this will be important. Uh, trying to get Amberite as well for an additional bubble, as well for cooking speed if you want to juice it up even further. Uh, this will help you as well, um, just kind of minutely to scale. Um, give you more cooking speed for power of 10 turkeys owned. Um, Frost Relic is going to be pretty important for skilling. Sigils as well. Uh, these are where your uh, artifact find chance kind of dwindles. Uh, like right now, it's like a 0.02% for me to claim uh, to, 
potentially get Sovereign Frost Relic or Chilled Yarn, but these also impact skilling and give you overall account progression bonuses. That's pretty good. So yeah, I mentioned you're probably hard farming uh, the, yeah, you're hard farming Fury Relic right now, which is not a bad idea. So I'm fully behind you on that. But if, uh, when you're done with that, I'd probably recommend trying to go for Amberite for no, bu no bubble left behind bonuses, um, 80 tablet for more sailing speed if you need it, uh, cooking speed, triangulon, you know, all, all pretty good uh, bonuses there. Obviously, if you are able to get towards the lanterns as well, these are extremely good. Uh, getting summoning bonuses. Okay, this right here. Uh, if you have this unlocked in Jade Emporium, 100% get off of Fury Relic and try to push this. Uh, because the summoning bonuses also give you artifact find chance. So if you get this even to ancient, you're almost um, you're, you're massively increasing your artifact find chance because your summoning is giving you so much uh, specifically. Like it's giving you uh, where is it? Uh, artifact like 3.28. You take that, it's going to boost you to like what 4.8 or something percent uh, times artifact find chance. So it's going to be a really good bonus for you. Also, you don't have skill efficiency. Yet. That kind of sucks. Oh, cool. Going back to sailing. Yeah, there's not much else to talk about there. Uh, going to divinity. I don't know what your god rank is. Only level three. Uh, not that important right now. But once you get the uh, Emporium uh, Jade Emporium upgrade, that's going to become more important. As way, 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 way down the line. So definitely not something you want to talk about right now. Like you need E24 Jade coin. Ain't no way. Ain't no way that's happening. <clears throat> also, it's kind of sad you don't have this. Uh, you know, just just saying. Probably get that. Uh, I mean, you have a you have a very small chance to get it, so I mean, why not? Um, unless you're doing the two minute gaming claim or two second gaming claims, then you know, don't do that. But whatever. Yeah, you should really hard fo hard focus trying to unlock this as soon as can as soon as you can, uh, because those three artifacts are insanely good. Uh, going on to farming. Okay, so. Um. So I don't talk a lot about farming in uh, some of the videos because it's not really something people should be focusing on. I think they're more better focused on trying to do um, earlier stuff like World 1 to World 3. You specifically, I think you could benefit from farming a little bit. It seems like you're on the farm right now to get uh, crop evo chance. I think you can probably benefit a lot from getting extra plots on your land. So I'd probably take yourself off of unlocking the... Um, I don't even know what these are, the little dandelions, and probably go back and unlock avocado, getting the potato chip, getting extra plots. Because essentially, it is a multiplicative bonus. Uh, I mean, if you boil it down, it is a multiplicative bonus to getting more plots of land. So you may as well try to grind this out, and at the same time, try to grind out some of the other ones that also provide multiplicative bonuses. Things like plus one crop and full, uh, crop when fully grown, uh, chance for your crops to be worth two times more. Like, these are really low requirements so i'd really recommend trying to get this because it'll it, it it's a long term it's it's, it's a short-term kind of detriment to you because you're not pushing some of the other important things like crop evo chance for pushing your crop depot but i will say once you have that done once you take the time to do that your farming will explode uh, because you'll get a lot of crops additionally as well if you are able uh, to unlock maxing this out as well Every single purchase of this up to eight will give you 20% chance uh, to gain plus one crop and fully grown, which again, scales with one of these bonuses, the uh, chance for it to be worth two times more, uh, which will scale that as well. So you get even more crops. So that gem shop bonus for farming specifically is extremely good uh, as well. Once you uh, once you kind of do that, uh, your other focus should be trying to get, your, um, get specific crops up to uh, these thresholds right here. So uh, getting... Uh, getting crop evo chance every 200 um, crops that you have will give you more crop evo chance more growth speed every 1000 that you have this will help scale uh, like ad infinitum um, the growth speed for farming and take the pain out of it so it's something you can probably focus on a little bit is try to focus on some of the earlier upgrades the plot chance the plus one when fully grown the times two when collected that kind of stuff because they're not that hard for you to grind out right now and they'll help you scale even further for unlocking, you know, this, this for example, um, and the future upgrades for it. So something you can go back and do pretty easily. Talking about sneaking. Okay, so um, you are on, which floor are you on? You're on this floor, I think. Um, I'm on the grind to get my lotuses upgraded, I believe. But yeah, so you're on that floor. You're getting combs right now. Uh, seems like you're doing the sacrificial lamb strategy. It's not bad. 
Um, but yeah, probably something you may want to do at some point. I mean, you are farming Jade right now, so you're doing something right. Um, the upgrades specifically that are really important for you to, uh, to try to push would be action speed. Um, it just takes you less time to do it. So effectively, it's a multiplicative increase to uh, your, your, sailing or your sneaking gains. Uh, other thing you may be able to do is upgrade just general uh, stealth. Um, less knockout time, uh, that way your character is knocked out less. Uh, getting, uh, not door damage time, but getting uh, upgraded charms as well. Uh, that way you're able to push even higher levels of the of the um, of the scroll of the of the pearl necklace as well uh, if you are able to try to upgrade uh, the max level of your gloves that we have more action speed on your characters uh, that'll help boost your account as well um, the one thing i want to note here you don't have the little golden dagger um, this will help increase your damage to doors that way when you progress sneaking uh, past the floor you're on when those when those are implemented uh, you'll be able to uh, push that even faster than before Cool, cool. And summoning. Okay. We're nearing the end. This is well over an hour. <laughs> We're nearing the end. So, okay. Let's go and talk about it. I don't know what your essence um, essence generation is per hour. I imagine it's probably good. Um, I also don't know how far you are in the battles, uh, but your bonuses are pretty good, uh, that being said. Um the best piece of advice I can give you would probably be upgrading mana generation is really important. Uh, getting unit damage as well is going to be pretty important because uh, this bonus right here gives you more damage. Uh, like it scales the damage you get. So similarly how yellow gives you percent HP, uh, the purple upgrade gives you percent damage. Uh, if you want to boost up essence generation specifically, uh, these stamps right here are pretty important. Um, uh, getting white essence generation, green, yellow, blue. This one, not so much yet until he up, up, uh, gives an update for summoning um, that we unlock red essence. I imagine summoning is probably going to skyrocket even further once we are uh, able to unlock red and cyan. But yeah, um, the the big things to focus on would probably be white knowledge, white essence champ, uh, unit health, unit damage, mana generation. Mana generation specifically for helping you push. This obviously is really expensive for you to upgrade, so maybe if you start, start focusing on green summoning and unit damage, uh, you want to try to kind of start leveling this out to help increase the damage. Uh, that way you're able to push even higher levels. That's kind of the uh, hard cap for summoning right now. Uh, some of the harder battles require a lot of dodge, so you need a lot of Vrumbies. Uh, also, Vrumbies you can try to max out because it gives you more dodge chance. Um, more HP is obviously going to help you uh, try to stall out the battles to give you more mana generation. More damage is just going to make it so uh, you have to hit less thresholds for killing the enemies, and you have to dodge less. So def uh, damage, in some sense, is a defensive mechanic, uh, just to a lesser extent, because it doesn't scale as high as HP does, as you see from the yellow uh, yellow essence thing you can sink your money into here. So, okay. I think I've talked a lot. My throat's getting dry, as you can tell, I'm coughing. So <laughs> I've kind of overexerted myself on your account review. Uh, something I do want to talk about a little bit further, just uh, your statues as well. Um, like I said, you are missing Star Chief EXP at a 90% rate, so you are missing out a little bit extra oomph you can give your um, give your statues. You can go back and try to upgrade like Seesaw, uh, Seesaw because you can get these probably pretty easily now that World 6 is out with the amount of drop rate it's provided. You can probably go back and farm some of the World 3 statues to get a little bit more like trapping power, worship power. Uh, construction EXP specifically is also pretty important. So you can go back to that grind a little bit, um, try to min-max those. Probably the best thing for you to focus on is finishing out your gold food farm like you're doing. Uh, focus on your uh, post office box, uh, trying to get some more Coliseum tickets to grind the rest of that out. Uh, as well, focusing on maybe re reorganizing your strategy with sneaking specifically, uh, trying to upgrade uh, some of the bonuses I mentioned, like charm upgrades, like knockout time, action speed. You know, all that stuff is going to help sneaking progress even further. Um, and as well, Star Chief EXP is something you should really be focusing on. I imagine you probably are able to hourly click that, so it should be too much of a problem for you. Um, and I, yeah, I don't, I don't really have anything uh, specific for you to focus on. Uh, it seems like you're doing kind of the things right right now. Um, there's a few things that I see that kind of startled me, uh, or you know, like kind of poked out to me, but I don't really have any um, anything in particular to nitpick you on. It's it's all. It's it's all like 
very minute details that are going to make very minimal impact to your account. So I think at your stage of the game, there's not really much direction for me to give you. It's more kind of a free-for-all. Uh, I guess your kind of min-maxi point is going to be leaderboards, uh, leader, leaderboards, leaderboards, uh, trying to see where you can improve your account through that avenue, uh, where you can try to, you know, out-compete the other people on this leaderboard and see what you want to hard focus on there. That might be something you can try to do. I mean, you can try to overtake Spesh if you want, but I don't suspect you're going to do that anytime soon. But yeah, I hope this gives you some insight, some of the things I'd be looking at if I were at your point. And uh, yeah, I mean, I I think you're doing pretty good. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, I really appreciate you giving me this account. Uh, sorry, not giving me the account physically, but, you know, giving me the account to review to sort of go over some of the things that um, that's end game players kind of do on a daily basis to sort of see, um, you know, how they're progressing, something they look at uh, to sort of progress their account. Uh, and hopefully we all learned something a little bit here and there uh, about your account, uh, something we can improve on ourselves. And hopefully this kind of helps everyone understand a little bit more about the game as well. Um, also, your 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 catching mini game is so low. That's kind of it's kind of Keck W right there. But yeah, I I think you're doing pretty good. I think you're doing pretty much everything right uh, for an end game player. Um, I don't really have anything else particular besides farming. Uh, maybe something you should passively focus on a little bit. But yeah, that hopefully wraps up the review. I've talked a little bit over an hour, uh, so <laughs> that should give you more than enough to sort of think about, reflect on. Not necessarily to work on because, I mean, you have a lot of things done right. So if you do have any questions or things you want to sort of rant about, go go ahead and message me. I'm, I'm, I'm free for the conversation, I suppose. But wish you the best of luck, man. Have a great time.